My name is Lola Puzzle, and this is Media Delta. Hello. Uh, it is a special episode of Media Delta. We have hit the big one zero zero. Hooray. <laughs> um, yeah, we are, this is episode 100. And I felt for episode 100, you know, it's, you know, you hit 100, you got to do some big special thing. And one of the things that I was thinking of doing uh, was uh, there has been a movie that has come up multiple times throughout the years um, as a movie that is, I've noticed, specifically not my thing, uh, that being John Carpenter's The Thing, because I have mentioned several times throughout this thing, I'm not really a horror person. I'm also very much not a body horror person. And The Thing is kind of a quintessential body horror picture, uh, like out, outside of maybe the Cronenberg stuff. Um, and I put it up on the retro and relief. So, Hey, you get us, get us, you fill out what we normally do for a relief. And I will do a media Delta. I will watch John Carpenter's the thing. <laughs> and we hit that goal. So I watched John Carpenter's the thing. And that is what we were talking about for episode 100 of media Delta. Um, if you're not familiar with the thing, uh, the thing about the thing is that it is a uh, horror movie that is set? It's in Antarctica, right? Uh, yeah, the Arctic. Yeah, yeah. it's in the Arctic, uh, and this base, this research base, comes across this weird thing. There is a dog that enters the premises, and it turns out there's something up with the dog, and that is it ain't Airbud shot by Norwegians. Yeah. yeah. And if you know Norwegian, then you know the plot of the film five minutes into the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah well, unfortunately, none of us do. So I, I'll never figure out the plot. I know yeah. it in my heart, but only because I've watched this movie a billion times. Yes. Uh, it's a mogus. Well, I, I really... It's kind probably of, the inspiration yes. for it. It yeah, is literally I, inspiration. There's even in a map fucking based off it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... It's actually funny because technically this could have come up naturally for Media Delta because there's a PS2 game. And well, there is a that generation of game based on the, this movie, um, but we haven't done it first and we're just going on with it because this is, in fact, a movie worth talking about. Um, and I am not the only one who watched this, so please introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm X and I want to be like you! <laughs> I'm Torpid Typus, and I'm here for more meat noises and screaming than your average porno. Yes. Um, How long did you take to come up with that? I came up with that just now. <laughs> Wait, shit, I didn't have one. There we go, got it. <laughs> All right. Um, and to be fair, um, the PS2 game did get brought up, and that's, I believe, the first time you said, probably not because of your aversion to body horror. Yep. Um... Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I went ahead and like, um, we all watched it. Um, you two actually have watched this. You have mentioned this very liking this film. Uh, I think it's like my fourth time watching it. Yeah. I um, lost count. <laughs> I've watched it so many times. So, um, I'm going to break tradition, uh, with this episode because normally I like to start out with someone who has not watched the film. And that's me this time. So I'm going to start this the discussion here uh, with what I thought about this movie. Um, so I'm familiar with uh, I'm I'm I shouldn't say I'm super familiar with John Carpenter's work. I've seen a lot of his like quintessential hits or I've seen a good number of them. Salt and Precinct 13 is probably my favorite. Uh, I've seen Halloween. Um, I think I've seen a couple of the Halloween movies that I'm not 100 percent certain if he worked on them um but i think there was also um i think i've seen an, a few others but i can't it it wasn't john Car no that i was about to say he didn't do the shining that was that was someone that was kubrick um yeah it was but, a much worse person yep yes um but i from what i've seen of john Carpenter's work uh i like general what he does and i will say uh, after watching this film, um, for those who are curious, um, I <laughs> so there were some times that I did have to look away and mute this mute the movie. Um, 
But those were times were not that basically it's the it's the things you'd expect when that would happen. Uh, this movie is incredibly gnarly uh, with, with its special effects. So, yeah, it's not, this movie's reputation definitely gets deserved in terms of like very gory special effects. Um, but outside of that, um, I will. It, it's actually kind of funny because there was like I was expecting there to be either two outcomes um, when watching this movie. It would either be something that like it just really wasn't my thing. And it's just like I just find it very weird or I just thought that it was OK or I thought or I liked it. Well, I liked it. <laughs> um, I don't really like I just thought this was a really good movie. Um, I don't really like it isn't or like it is definitely a horror film and it's definitely one that um, I probably like if if someone wanted me to like wanted me to watch it with them like I would definitely do it although it's not one that I'm probably going to go out of my way myself to watch again but uh, that doesn't mean necessarily that I dislike the movie I do think that this is a really from what I could tell it's a very te like technically sound movie like Andrew Barry, technically so, and the story itself is really good too. Um, it's just there are parts that I don't really want to look at again. Um, even though some of the effects in it are a bit goofy sometimes. Like, uh, oh god, when there's like a scene, I forgot whose transformation, but there was one that was particularly wiggly that was kind of funny. Like, I, I want to say it's like the second time that the monster shows up. I believe you're thinking of Palmer in the couch scene. Possibly, yeah. Okay, uh, no, no. The favorite goofy one, though, is when they're doing going to check on the body. Like, the doctor's going to check on the body, puts his hand in, just gets fucking chomped off. That that one's funny, yes. Like, that one is quite goofy just with... The gut fucking opens up. It it's opens so up... <laughs> You know what, actually, the thing with the, the effect is, and I wonder if there was any uh, inspiration on it, but it really reminds me of is that one boss in uh, Zero Ranger uh, with the uh, the orbs that ha opens up into the mouth because the mouth kind of looks like the mouth from the thing. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. Uh, one of the more classic examples of a, of a video game being influenced by a film was... Uh, Turok 2's cerebral uh, cerebral bore, which was in, uh, heavily uh, inspired by the uh, floating silver spheres from the Phantasm series. All right. Um. Yeah, that's yeah. It's that's a silly scene. Um. I actually really like the uh, one that was uh, when they do the blood, the blood uh, testing. Uh, that scene mm -hmm. itself. Actually, there is one thing I did want to bring up. Which was um, the nice thing about the gory with the with like actually the the scene you mentioned with the CPR is like the one thing that I could think of that doesn't fit this. A lot of the really gory scenes in this movie are the you can kind of feel that they're coming. Um, you don't know when exactly, but you know it's like mm, I probably might want to mute um, because you can kind of tell when some there's just an atmosphere. Now, like something's about to happen. There's only one that really, I wouldn't say come out comes out of nowhere, but basically does, and that's the very first one. Yeah, uh, like the one with the dog. The one with the dog. That one I kind of knew. Well, uh, granted, I I had you kind knew because of, of outside knowledge. Yeah, you had, yeah. Some, you had some foresight going in, but yeah, no, that I get. Also, kind of going back to the the CPR scene real quick. One of the reasons why I think that scene is so kind of goofy instead of creepy or terrifying is the practical effects used for that if i remember correctly it's um the the chest cavity just sort of disappears and then the teeth appear and chomp in it's not a very smooth effect so it's, it it lends the it lends it less credibility as a visual uh as a visual part yeah it's it actually also is a lot like I feel like from what I from what I saw of the other transformations, uh, it just feels like a lot of the things were a lot more um, 
kind of otherworldly. They, they, they definitely feel a lot more alien, whereas that one just is like a human set of teeth. Yeah. Like, it's not like it's it's off putting, but it's also kind of campy almost like especially yeah. also when the dude's head gets pops off. That one's also that effect also looks kind of silly. Um, but I think that it is just a really good it. The practical effects in this movie are really good. Um, and also, it's just a very, it's a good tense in this movie. Like, it really get, nails that perfectly. Um, and I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I specifically wanted to say, but um, I know you two are fans of the thing, so uh, <laughs> who wants to go first in terms of uh, their thoughts? I'll I mean, let Axe go because Axe probably has more to say on it. <laughs> um, uh, me, which is like, I like it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm the same way, uh, but I don't just like it. This is this is I've said this before. I don't know if I've said it on uh, Retro Rank Rhapsody could... or previous media deltas, but I have said it in passing. And this is my favorite film. And I don't just mean as a horror film. This is literally my favorite film ever made. Right up there with, like, Princess Bride and Spirited Away. Very different types of films. But, like, when I think of my idea of a quote-unquote perfect film, like I said, those are my three. Those are my three films that are just so far up at the top and nothing else really comes close to them. In terms of horror movies, there are a lot of really great horror movies. Um, but none of them ever really comes close to getting the exact feel that The Thing does. The Thing is about... Uh, being held in like closed quarters. It's about you know claustro a claustrophobic type of horror, and not just that, but it it also kind of helps breed a later genre of horror, which I just call round table horror, or some 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 people call it single room horror, and it's a the type bogus. of horror. Yeah, basically. Um, and I mean, Among Us is a special is a specific type of that kind of horror, which obviously the thing you know helped bring about. But um, there's another type of horror called single room horror, which is basically you get a bunch of people, you shove them in a room and then you have them basically duke it out and figure out like there's movies like Exam, Circle, um, Platform 38, I think it was called. I was uh, going to say, wouldn't The Cube be a good example of that or like Saw? <laughs> It's multiple rooms, but technically cube. Uh, Saw, again, depends on which one. The first one would technically count uh, to a degree, but it's not. When, I, when you think of, like, a single room horror, you're looking like, would you rather um, technically cube, exam, uh, the, uh, okay, what was it called? Uh, the Sun oh, no, four. It had, a, it had a John C. McGinley in it. Uh, Belco Experiment, right. So it's a type of horror where you get a bunch of people, you shove them in a room, and, you know, the horror is seeing them rip each other apart. It's, it's all about, you know, man, humanity's inhumanity. And in this, it's, a lot, it's less about man's inhumanity, but more of man's nature of mistrust. It's all about um, paranoia, um, and not even conspiracy, but just more of... You know, how can we trust that we are who we are, let alone they are who they are? And it builds on top of this. On, and essentially, one of the key key scenes is uh, Wilford Brimley discovering that, oh, shit, this thing is on a cellular level. It doesn't even just exist as separate parts. It exists on a cellular level. And if even one tiny speck of it gets out into, you know, the populace, we're fucked. Um... It's an interesting film, and it's a really cool take on horror, where it, the horror itself isn't just the creature. It's what the creature could do. Um, most horror tends to kind of confine, like, tends to kind of confine stuff to a certain area, and it never really worries about it getting out of that area. Like um, the Hatchet series, for example, all take place in a swamp in New Orleans. So it's never really worried about getting them out. I think few, a very, a very few horror films really... Uh, play with this uh the one that comes to mind is jason takes manhattan uh friday the 13th part eight i think 
Um, but other than that, like horror movies really just like to confine their horror to a single location. And this is one of those few that actually plays with the idea of well, what if the horror got out? What if it got into the population? And that's a key driving point for the, the paranoia, because then Blair just starts wrecking shit and everybody thinks that he's going to try to kill them when he's actually trying to save them. So there's lots of neat little layers to not just the, the the chemistry between the actors, which is spot on in almost every single case, but every actor, every character has a specific role and they all play it really, really well. Um, the, there's, there's not too much of a soundtrack, but what's there really, I think, adds to the atmosphere and it, it enhances the scenes that it's in. Uh, even the clever use of a Stevie Wonder song, uh, Superstitious. And they, they did the right, you know, you know, you get the right li- lyrics in, you play them. Um, but it's all of it kind of leads up to signposting its way to the first horror and then into the next horror. And um, like you said, there's a little there's an, an air to those scenes. There's kind of this feeling like, yeah, it's about to happen. And that's another part of why this is such an effective horror film. Because it doesn't just throw you into the horror. It builds you up to it and it lets you know it's common. You don't know when, but it's common. And you're not quite sure how it's going to happen because each incident is different from the last. The first was tentacles and tendrils and, you know, absorption and, you know, things like that. And then the next one, uh, the, one of the next ones is the, the mouth opening on the hands. Another is just the person's head splitting open and, you know, eating another person. Uh, bit by bit in front of everybody like there's different ways that it manifests so you get thrown off guard even though you know it's coming because you don't know how it's coming and that and that again is a good example of horror is keep the keep the audience guessing you know prepare them but get them guessing so you can still kind of kick them off guard when you when you come to the actual the actual scene and sometimes some movies get to get to have this some movies do not this movie has a nice ambiguous ending with with some with some you know clues strewn about some movies don't get to some movies don't you know deserve that kind of ending uh, but this one absolutely earns it it's a very very grim but mildly hopeful kind of ending to the film um and I, you go back to the acting like even in the cheesiest moments this everybody's really doing a good job um, they got they got a good cast. They picked a really good cast for this film. And it's a good example of how John Carpenter really knew how to uh, how to get everybody together and, you know, achieve like it's again, you go back to Halloween, like they're both really great examples of how John Carpenter is a phenomenal writer and director. Um, and I'd love to see him do do more stuff like this, it, you know. But um, yeah, no, I just I, I love this. I love this movie. And there's like it from the casting to the writing to the actual horrors itself to the, the work of Rob Bottin, who is the special effects uh, guru for this film, who also uh, did the special effects for Michael Jackson's thriller. Um, and I believe he also did the special effects for American Werewolf in London. Uh, I could be wrong on that one, but I'm pretty sure he was. He's 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 right up there with Tom Savini. Just amazing practical effects. Uh, a little questionable looking blood here and there, but you know this was back in the back. You know before they they actually perfected you know fake blood and all that. So they were they, they what they had going for them just it, it just I works out really well. Food dye and corn syrup. It's so obvious. It's so painfully obvious. But it's what we had back then. You go back to watch. Um, Herschel Gordon Lewis films. That's some ugly looking blood. That is that is some trash level splatter. But it's what they had at the time. And uh, I I think I think I think the whole team, you know, top to bottom of this film, knocked it out of the park. Okay, but what? It's a shame that it barely broke even. Oh yeah, no, it was a um, it was kind of a yeah, it was kind of a commercial uh, commercial flop. And it wasn't until it was brought out on home video that it developed a cult following and actually, you know, made back what, what they had spent. Um, it's also 
a, a huge sore point for uh, for uh, Carpenter. Uh, it's been brought up to him a number of times, and he's always responded in the negative because it didn't work out when it came Especially out. Because it is his favorite film that he's worked on. <laughs> It's my favorite but, uh, film of his. <laughs> so to clarify, the reason it flopped isn't because it was bad or necessarily because of critical reception. It's because it released on the same day as Blade Runner. It was yeah. also competing against E.T. around the same time. Yeah, so that was the other thing, too, is E.T. was popular at the time. And with this film, uh, audience weren't audiences didn't really react well to it because of E.T., because E.T. was this family-friendly, sort of uplifting story, and in this other one, you've got this alien that's running amok and killing everybody. So, like, the, the, two, th- the two thoughts aren't jiving together, so that, that actually did lend to it not, you know, doing all that hot. Which it is a huge thing. At least the same day as Blade Runner. Yeah. I mean, On top I of that, it's... it was that year, Cohen and Poltergeist, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, all came out as well. It was... On on top of that, there wasn't great marketing. It basically, yeah. it's not that it was a bad film. It's just this whole mess of other problems yeah. happened. Yeah, it was a very good movie year. Is the yeah. thing. Yeah, and I mean, in my in my case, I would have I prefer the thing to Blade Runner, but I I kind of like them both. I kind of yeah. like them both. I mean, I don't I don't dislike it. I just don't like it as much as the thing. <laughs> it's yeah. the thing. They're both solid films, but you know that that unfortunately was the case. And but luckily, luckily, uh, it gained a cult following, and people started to see its you know its potential and its value. Uh, and then we got a really mediocre <laughs> video game adaptation out of it that takes up almost all of your memory card for one save. Yay! That's all I got to say. All right, uh, Thorpo. What did you think? I like I like it. It's a good movie, and you should watch it. <laughs> I, don't know, just the, the, I don't know why, but the way you said that just reminded me of like a GI Joe Fensler film character. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Stop all the death, though. Uh, I like no, it. It was good. It's it's a good movie. Um. Axe honestly said the lion share, and so did uh, Lolo. But honestly, I kind of intended for that anyway. <laughs> I think it's a really good. Sh- I-, I thought it was a very good movie. Uh, the casting was absolutely stellar. The acting was great. Um, it was very Carpenter was very good at setting up all the suspense because it-, it is a movie that lives and dies by its suspense. The horror, like the. The jumps and all that are good, but they would not work without it. Yeah. But it it's very good use of it, except for maybe a couple times, like, the hands in the gut, though that was more of an effects issue, which caused a tragedy, actually. Yeah. But, that, yeah. But, and then the other one, I would say, the only one that really sticks to me is, like, really egregious is at the end, when they split up, despite knowing they shouldn't split up. Um... Also, do the uh, dumb. yeah, also, I have thought that the last time that you see the like the thing um, actually was like its worst looking form. Like Which it didn't. That? That, That's when, the one it's work. When it, yeah. It's at the very end when it's uh, they throw the stick of dynamite at it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah fuck just looks, you too. Yeah. It just looks like a normal monster. Like, yeah, the thing generally works better when you can't see a whole lot of it. it you know, yeah. what, it, it's like the the thing with um, Dragon Ball Z villains where it like all the like early transformations like uh, sell, like look all cool and like alien. And then you get the perfect version. And it just looks like a just dude a dude with a funky hat and a tail. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, just, it's, it's just that another too. Toriyama dude. But, like, it worked when it was most unsettling because it was just strictly body horror as opposed to just a meat mutant. Yeah. yeah. Like, when the fucking dog's face rips open is really good. Mm. And like, and the yeah. dog scene is very, a very... That's a very mean scene. It's probably, like, the meanest scene in the film. Uh, yeah. Directly. It's, it's a hard watch because it's, you know, you're watching dogs get murdered, like... And watching them but get it is absorbed. also very graphic and very well done. Yeah. 
but uh, you yeah. up for the rest so of when you just get the meat mutant at the end it's not as impactful but I, I still think it's really good um i think the ending is very good and apparently there was a different ending that was originally intended that was not as good yeah um because yeah there was like original was it the original cut that they basically what would happen is at the very end you would see a scene of like just people walking around in chicago but there's like a red filter on it no that was the ending i don't remember what cut it was for but yeah i think it was like a working thing but yeah no it's uh and yeah the the quick thing about the tragedy is that basically uh for the arms bit when the dude gets his arms bit off they had a double who uh had prosthetics basically because he didn't have his own but the problem is um that scene in filming it uh basically caused him to relive his trauma and he eventually committed suicide yeah that uh, that's that's not good <laughs> kind of a a, a manos situation yeah it's very sad to be fair the manos thing was a very different beast i mean the the causes were different but the the result was sadly the same yeah yeah but yeah no it's 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 a good movie i i think it's a very good watch i think uh it's an interesting setting i love alaska excuse me i mean the arctic (laughs) look in all of the people doing very smart things you should do in the fucking middle of the Arctic, like running out without any fucking protection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But no, I, I, I think it's a very good movie. Very well done. Uh, good horror. Very, very good. And I think it's honestly one of the best of its kind, if not the best. I, I would personally say it's the best, but... Yeah. I'd <laughs> like... Because I, I have IMDb up in case I needed, or needed to reference anything, and I have to look at the... um. The goose, the goose section, and uh, really does not seem to like the uh, knife uh, blood s- test section yeah, because it fucking cut your thumb. It also they share the same knife. Yes. Yeah, that would taint the results. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're, and to be fair, but, they only shared a knife once the uh, up until something went wrong. Yeah, it's it it. Yeah, it's also something that's like, hey, it, it's a horror movie. Just, just. But also, me here. don't cut your fucking thumb. Yeah, that's, don't. Yeah, I mean, don't cut anything, but especially don't cut your thumb. I'm trying. I'm saying, if you're trying to get blood, don't cut your fingertips. There's a lot of nerves there. Yeah. Uh. It, yes. Like I feel like that. Like it's actually kind of funny that like that's one of the harder scenes to watch in this movie. Mm-hmm. doesn't help the way some of them go at it with the knife. Yeah. Ugh. Well, part of that is, is um, and it's just like with a lot of different horror films, it's it's not the stuff that's outlandish and over the top that'll really get you. It's the stuff no, it's that's the more that's realistic. Relatable. Yeah, it's the yeah. relatable shit. The grounded stuff. The grounded stuff's the stuff that'll get you every time. I have a literal scar on my thumb from a knife. Mm. The way it went at it was a bit different. I'm not going to talk about it because I'm pretty sure I've made Lolo uncomfortable with it before. But yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't fillet your thumb, chat listeners. Actually, no, it was it wasn't it was someone else. I, I've made multiple. People I don't uncomfortable like it, with but it. it's it's not. Yes. Worst I've had is a I went fishing and I got a fish hook stuck through my thumb. But that okay. Oh, no. Yeah, that that's not, not yeah. quite the same, but you know. I, I won't talk about it on here, but yeah. No, that's, my point that's is, fine. it is relatable horror that is the most uncomfortable, and that is the knife scene. But in general, it's I watch the movie. This is what yeah. I'm gonna say. If you haven't mm-hmm. watched it, if you have watched it, watch it again. Fucking a. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So I feel also, like we're good. Keith David and Kurt Russell fucking fantastic in that film. Yes. Uh, everyone, yeah, as we mentioned, everyone that, like, it's, a lot of people are like, wow, it's weird seeing a younger Wilford Brimley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, it is, it is weird. It's, because uh, also, like, there is a very much a, oh, hey, it's that guy, uh, Charles Hallahan is in this movie. Um, who, There's a handful of them that are yeah. that guy. Yeah. Um. Shout out to Gary's eyebrows. God, they were incredible. 
fluffy eyebrows. So fluffy. You could get lost in those eyebrows. Uh, yeah. Wait. Oh, okay. No, I just realized I think I might know where. I think I might know where. Either way, watch the no. movie, everyone. Okay. Watch it. Watch the thing. It's okay. Good. Watch thought, the thing. I thought that Gary like, was the guy who played the president in Hot Shots Part New, but the, the it's not. 80s thing, not the other thing. Oh, I know who you're. T- yeah, no. It is someone else, different- actually. <laughs> only, only watch no. the 80s thing. He was the um, he was the sniffing glue guy from Airplane. Yes. Yes. Now that. Yes. Pick the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. That's that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, though. Right. Only watch the 80s thing. Yes. Yes, there um, was a... Um, 2011, 2011, I think. 2011, yeah, there was a 2011 remake or reboot or prequel. Don't remember what it is. Honestly, don't care because I heard it was crap. It's not worth watching. Also, it does bear mentioning. It does bear mentioning that this is not an original idea per se. Uh, there was a story uh, written, I believe, in 1955 by uh, some dude uh, James Campbell I believe John W Campbell Jr John John W Campbell Jr blah, blah, blah. And anyway, it was, what Lobo said it was called it, Who Goes There um yes actually it came out uh the original version of it came out in 1938 38 um and then uh it was originally written as sort of a short story uh with a slightly different ending uh, a number of years later, after uh, he had passed away, uh, some of his works were sent sent to um, I can't remember where exactly, but uh, they discovered that there was a full novel version of it called Frozen Hell, uh, which expands a lot on the ideas. But what we got originally was a movie called The Thing from Outer Space, which was a very loose adaptation. And technically on a on a technical level. Uh, the Thing, John Carpenter's The Thing from 1982, is a um, a second uh, adapt is, is, the, is the second adaptation is also considered sort of a uh, a remake of The Thing from Outer Space. I don't agree with that, but whatever. Um, and The Thing actually hues way closer to the original story. I don't have a whole lot more. That was I just thought that was an interesting factoid that bears watch the movie. Person. Yep. It's good. All right. Incredibly good film. I think we're good to rank then. Uh huh. All right. So we're going to rank this even on our 1 to 21 scale of absolute one being absolute Massacraft. Really cannot get much better than that. Uh, to 21 being absolute garbage, not even like worth ironically. Like it, you get very little enjoyment out of it. So on a technical level, I have to ask this. Uh, you know, I'm just going to have both of you <laughs> say it at the same time. So three, two, one, one. one. Yeah, that's there's no I, question. It's without a fucking doubt. This is a one. Yeah, because it, it is, fits all the criteria. And also, it's really fucking good. Oh, shit, mm-hmm. Patrick. Yeah, I can bring up my questions. <laughs> I mean, the other thing too to mention is, is it's it's one of its you know counterparts, Alien. Uh, one of our biggest criticisms was not that it was long, but that it didn't properly utilize the time. Not long into the film of the thing, you get the thing. Like it brings you right into the horror. It doesn't wait halfway through the film to get you going. It gets you going, and then you just follow them between each horror. Yeah. Uh, actually, what the dog doing? <laughs> actually, what? No, it, it like it takes a little bit to establish the cast, but it makes very good use of that time. Yeah, yeah. and like even like that, that. that intro bit, even that is still pretty solid. Well, yeah, because they already get the movie like they already get things moving with the Norwegians going after the dock. Yeah, like Alien, it it introduces the characters, but we don't really get much to go. Like things don't happen around them; they're just sort of dilly dallying until finally the horror happens whereas in the thing there's stuff that's happening constantly Very character driven yeah. yes actually so let's just go through the questions uh so i believe number one uh because actually uh thanks to notepad plus plus i think it might have eaten the file again but i remember him this time um does this rank uh 
in the top 1% of its genre. Yeah. Without a doubt. It is. Un- unquestionable. I would agree with that. Does this rank within 5% of all me- all movies? 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah easily. Uh, does it and you just util- does it utilize on like most of it like does it use good does it make good use of its runtime? Yes, one hundred percent. Which is yes, a it's... slightly longer than normal movie because it's like, almost it's, it's not like two hour hours fifty. It's yeah, it's just a few minutes shy of two hours. But even then, yeah. like it doesn't really feel like that. No, because there's there's a also I want to say like it's not always pure tension because otherwise pure tension would wear you the fuck out. Yeah, but. It, it makes very good use of that time spreading like tension throughout and the occasional scare and then balancing them very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, does this have, would you say that it's a little bit it, like, does this go outside of um, a film that not just horror film, like horror people can enjoy? I don't know. What Here. do you think, Lolo? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. Cl- yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're literally the proof here. <laughs> yeah, um, just for the Lolo. for the record, um, I would I am uh, I would am fine with one. Um, I'm just putting my thing. just since I, I brought it up. Yeah, uh, I was thinking it's definitely I would see it anywhere one to five. Um, but definitely I am fine with one. Um, but let's just go through the motions. So the other movies that we have in one are Die Hard, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Red Line, Robocop, The Addams Family. Um, just to also put the C, what do we have at two? Um, we have Alien, Aliens, Commando, Hardcore Henry, Pat Labor, the early days, Pat Labor, the movie, Secret of Nim, The Slayers, and um, Vampire Hunter Deep Bloodlust. Um, I would be fine saying that the thing is above all of those movies at two. The only one that I, um, I would say is possibly in contention uh, is Alien. Uh, I, that is probably the other horror movie that I would say um, I would enjoy. I do have to agree that I feel like the thing definitely uses its time a lot better than Alien. Um, Alien's really good, although I feel like the beat by beat bits of the thing are a little bit more interesting than Alien. Um, and Commando's like I, I personally I would rather watch Commando because it doesn't have a lot of body horror, but also <laughs> that's just me, and I can recognize that Commando has some slight flaws to it. <laughs> Yeah. Even though I it's mean, a great movie. If anything, the floor has to be two because there's no way that the thing is a worse film. Yeah. Or not as good as Alien. It is that, good, if not better. Alien yeah, or that, Aliens. They're both there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I would definitely see that two is the floor. Um and there's no argument. I'm putting it in one. Yeah, it has to be a one. It, like before we even got together to watch it and record this, we all knew where it was going to go because yeah, we just I had mean, to go through the motions of me yeah. actually watching it. It's an iconic film for a reason. It's been uh, uh, it's inspired so many other properties and it's been a, 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 a keystone to so many different, you know, to different genres as well as, you know, um, different types of media. So. There's no way it could possibly be anything but one. Among Us. Yes. And, and um, Among Us isn't even the first one to do it. There was a... Um, oh, yeah. I, I remember there was a, a Half-Life mod. I forget the name of it. Oh. Um, Seven it the, something. Or is it say... Well, no. It's not... Um, It's not the specialist. What was... Shit. What was the one where there was like the super overpowered dude? There was like a person who was invisible or something. Yeah. They were like a, I don't remember the name of the mod. Scene yeah, uh, Anners did it. Scene Anners did it a couple of times. Did a couple of videos on it. That's gonna bug me. The hidden. Yeah. The hidden. Yeah. 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 I don't know if that's the first one, but it's the first one I've ever come across that took the concept of 
of uh, of the thing and applied it to a video game. And there's others out there too. But again, that that's why this film so the film's just so fucking iconic. It's inspired, you know, in a, a genre of video game and helped lead us to another genre of horror. Yep. Yeah, I wonder if you could. Tet- mm. As I say, I wonder if technically you could say that uh, the thing inspired Mafia. Nope. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't uh, know about that one. I I don't know about that one. Yeah. Yeah, that one might be a stretch. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say because like Mafia came out four years later, but it is a decidedly different setup. Yeah. Anyway. Um. Yeah, so uh, content-wise, uh, Gore plus plus, very much plus plus um, plus. Not just a plus. Um, <laughs> other than that, there really isn't anything else. It's just very gory. Yeah, like there really isn't any problematic bits. I know the black dudes don't even die first. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Anything we want to call out for music, cinema, or okay, music, charm, cinematography, storytelling, action, and art. Uh, I feel like art has to be a thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I and also the, the, so I did want to call it the music thing specifically because it's actually something that we didn't mention. Or I know, Axe, you mentioned the music itself, mm-hmm. um, but uh, it's actually kind of interesting because John Carpenter is noted uh, like. I don't want to say notorious because I don't know if that's the right word, but is noted for um, doing his own soundtracks. Uh, this one did not have his own sound. He did not do the music for the thing. Uh, Ennio Morricone did the soundtrack, mm-hmm. who, if you're familiar with the soundtrack to um, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, and if, like a lot of other films, uh, that's that's the composer for this. Uh, it's good, but not really noteworthy. Mm-hmm. It also yeah. lacks a lot of the style that Carpenter usually do. No, yeah. no Casio. Look, man, Carpenter helped inspire an entire modern genre of music, all right? Mm-hmm. Look, Casios like can be fucking good. <laughs> I'm just saying, it'll sound like a Casio. And uh, Carpenter actually popularized the slasher genre, which technically, if you want to get, you know, pedantic, started with Psycho. And then Halloween pretty much brought it into the mainstream, and that's where the slasher genre uh, started from. But I no, yeah, way. yeah, Carp- Carpenter's Carpenter's uh, soundtracking it was is a notable one because, like, I mean, you got the Halloween theme, and then unfortunately with the thing, like, even though you c- you'll recognize the 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 theme to the thing, it doesn't stand out in the way that Halloween does. It's not something like. That you you can really like, you know what I mean? Like it's it's not as iconic. Yeah. Um. Yes. Um. Let's see, is there anything? Let's see. Um. I, mean, I, I guess ten- the cinematography. Yeah, was I was about to say that. I don't know if charm is really the right thing. Yeah, for charm it. isn't quite the word I would use for it. Yeah. No. <laughs> It's also like the action also is. I would say the writing is good. Yeah. Writing, yeah. writing cinematography. I think that's probably music good. Leave alone. Yeah. yeah. The action was fine, but it wasn't the focus. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, a lot of the action is like, oh shit, something's happening, flailing the kind action of action, which is. Every time was very fast. Which is perfect. Like, it's good, but it's also, it's a. It doesn't make it a good action action scene. It's the reactions are good. Um, yay or nay? I honestly... charms. Yeah, I really can't think of anything. Well, I guess Uh, uh, yay for length, because it utilizes its time properly. I don't know if I'd do that, per se, because usually that's like... hmm. Is there a Kurt Russell charm? There is not a Kurt Russell for <laughs> Which is a missed opportunity. Exactly. Um, so I'm looking at... So I'm looking at the charms, and I really don't see anything... Yeah, like, nothing that I would go off of what you have there. I think it's just a really good movie. <laughs> it's just a really good movie. So, I think I'm... I think we're good with that. 
Yay! John Carpenter's a thing. It is at one. Where uh, watch it. And if you have watched it, watch it again. Watch yep. the movie. All right. Oh, film. Well, oh, film. With that, um, that's going to do it for this episode. So, Axe, or anything you want to plug? Uh, yes, the Autistic Self Advocacy Advocacy Network and your local Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Uh, please adopt. Don't shop. And Torpo. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Torpotypus and at Torpotypus on Twitter. And I would like to plug the hole in my gut that this, this horrible alien creature has created. Yes. All the teeth. It's got um, a lot of teeth and they're not even mine. Chomp, 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 chomp. So um, here I will say is normally where I'd say what the next thing we're doing is. But uh, at the moment, I'm actually not certain what the next thing we're going to do is. Um, in fact, uh, due to the way this is being released, two people here have not heard it because I haven't recorded it yet. Um, but uh, if you have missed it, uh, by the time you're hearing this, uh, also, I guess the people who are <laughs> listening in the discord, um, I will have put out a update on the radio channel that is actually listed as a Hazeltown story episode uh, where I go over kind of. It's right around the time that um, it's May. I think it will be released in May. If not, it will be released last week. No, it will be released last week of April, um, which is like this all like retro and grapsy started around May. So that's kind of anniversary to that. Uh, so I'll have an update with how things are going um, with that, in which uh, the gist of what I'll say there is... Um, Media Delta will be Media Delta and Hazeltown story are both going to go on a small break. Uh, hiatus, yay! Hiatus. Yeah. yeah. So there will for what would be two releases of Media Delta at least. Uh, there won't be any releases, and it would unfortunately I, it, there's not going to be anything to replace it um, because I want to. There are some things I've been wanting to focus on um, with the main Twitch channel. Uh, so I want to give myself some time to just not have to worry about anything else and just sit down and think. Also, now that we're at 100 episodes, I just want to sit down and just think about how what we've done throughout things. And I want to refresh the formula a little bit. So I'm giving myself a lot of time so that uh, when we come back, which we are coming back, um, that we can, you know, start a kind of refreshed and, you know, Media kind of Delta streamlined things. Season two? two. Or is Ten, it three well, at this point? I think well, it's three. That, well, I haven't done a season. Media Delta has been one thing. I haven't done seasons like Hazeltown Story. Um, season 69. Yes. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, there, there is going to be some delay. Uh, new in, season, new you. Uh, I... I think I have a feeling I know what's go what it's going to be based on what the poll. I do have a poll active in my Discord currently uh, to determine what it is, and I think I know what's going to win. Ah, uh, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But yes, uh, we're going to be on hiatus. So, I will, um, I will not be seeing you in the next couple weeks, but I will be back. And I hope you tune in when we return. If you would like to see the list in which we have ranked every single thing we've done for Media Delta, you can go to r3.ldp.life in your browser. If you would like to watch the sister show that determines what could show up on Media Delta, that's Retro Rank Rhapsody, you can watch it live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash lolotopuzzlo or on YouTube at youtube.ldp.life. If you would like to discuss this episode of others, please join our Discord server by going to discord.ldp.life in your browser, which should give you a link. Thank you again for listening.